Chapter 21 Casey clutched Leader's arm so hard her nails must have been cutting into his flesh. But seconds after the terrifying announcement from the Bortrax, red lights flashed, pushing away the darkness. Sirens wailed and she turned to Leader, her heart in her throat. What does this mean? she shouted. His expression made her stumble away from him, her back hitting the desk. He's shifted. Must protect, mate. The words tore from his lips, deep, almost animalistic. Before her eyes, he transformed, his skin changing to a glistening, silky black, blending into the darkness. His eyes glowed pure silver. Throwing back his head, he roared. A scream tore from her lips, and the hairs on her arms rose. The creature crouched, then bounded out of the room with the speed and agility of a wolf. For one long second she stood frozen. Then her legs folded beneath her, and she crawled beneath the desk, her pulse hammering in her ears. Now there are two kinds of monsters on this ship. Then, unbidden, the thoughts from the back of her mind began again. You're going to die, in the dark, alone, torn apart by one of those creatures, or the boar tracks. Either way, it'll be painful. She put her head in her hands, squeezing her eyes shut and trying to force the virus's thoughts from her mind, but it continued to taunt her until her own breathing grew so loud in her ears that she could hear little else. Stop, she shouted, and was met with silence. The voices were gone. She raised her head, wiping back the tears that ran down her cheeks. With her ears no longer covered, the horrible blaring of the sirens seemed to pulse around her. Even though her legs shook, she crawled out from beneath the desk. I've never been so scared in my life, but Seer needs me. I have to get out of here and lead the women to fight. The truth was she didn't know how things changed now that the Bortrax had taken the command deck, but she didn't care. She'd heard Seer's plan when she'd been in the med bay, which was reckless. Suicidal, Leader had said. The alien men might think she and the other human women were too weak to fight, but she knew better. If she could get them out of their rooms and into the ships before Seer had time to program them to mimic him, she could save his life. She and the other women might have had only a short time to train, but they could handle this. She knew they could handle this. And she wasn't about to let the man she loved die when she could do something about it. Love? Her mind froze, turning the word over. But no matter how she looked at the word, it rang true deep in her chest. She loved Seer. Of course she did. Putting her hands on the hollow screen, she brought up the communication screen, which he'd already linked to the bridal suites. Taking a deep breath, she touched the button that would connect her with them. The golden particles swirled and expanded, nearly covering the entire wall. In the center of them was her own face staring back at her, and around that, hundreds of tiny squares that peered into small rooms. Hello? she whispered. Her voice echoed for a moment. In the tiny squares, women stood from bunks and desks and moved to stand in front of her. And in a few of the rooms, well-dressed alien men stood beside their women, their expressions troubled. Hundreds, if not thousands, of frightened voices spoke at once. Stop! she shouted above them. An itch began at the back of her neck. They were all staring at her, at her. She had become their leader. She squared her shoulders. I never thought I would be addressing you today, on an alien spaceship, far from home, asking you to fight. The past few days have been the best and worst of my life. I didn't die fighting the aliens. Instead, I found myself mated to one of them. Some of the women raised their fists in anger. A few flipped her off. Others seemed almost happy. She nodded her head in acknowledgement to all of them. I'm not sure what your experiences have been. I'm sure each of ours has been different. But I know more than anything that the aliens who captured us are not evil. They were simply lonely. Their women are gone, and they were tricked into this plan by other aliens who are evil. That second, monstrous race of aliens is here now, 
and they want us, not to mate us, not to treat us as equals, or to provide us with a home as our current mates wish to do, but to breed us like cattle, and having just one of their children kills the host when they cut it out. A stunned silence followed her words, and she saw horror cross the women's faces. Even those who had been smirking or cursing stopped and paid attention. This ship wasn't built for fighting, and the men on board aren't warriors. The aliens, Bortrax, have already captured this ship. Our only chance to escape is to get to our ships, and our ships are the only ones that have a chance at taking down these creatures, or else they will follow us to Earth and take whoever they want. But we can't do it unless we all attack together. Alone, they will pick us off one by one. But together, we can use the formations we learn to buy us a chance at a future. The way I see it, this is the real battle. This is what we trained for on Earth. This is the time where we can stand together and change our fates. She took a deep breath. I'm not a leader. No one's special. I'm just like you. But I'm asking you to fight with me, to save ourselves, to protect Earth, and to save these aliens who want to be our mates. Even if they are misguided, they don't deserve to die. In a moment, I'm going to unlock all your doors. Those of you who wish to fight, get to your ships as quickly as you can. We are going to fly straight at those motherfuckers and show them what we can do. For Earth! She shouted the last words and raised her fist in the salute they'd learned in training. It was echoed by many, many of the women. Then there was a cacophony of voices, some shouts of agreements, some questions. It didn't matter. It was time to go. Her fingers hovered over the door release. There's no time. It's now or never. She hit the button. A thousand tiny bells chimed. Some as one, some a second or two later. The women turned to look at their freedom. It's up to you now. She moved away from the screen and to the door exiting into Sears Medbay. Jumping before it to trigger the release, it slid open. Hurrying to the door to the hallway, her bare feet whisper soft against the metal. She jumped again. The door slid open. She jumped again, backward this time. Her eyes widened. A creature was there, seven feet tall with a tan shell like a scorpion covering its massive body. It wore no clothes, but every inch of its shell seemed to quiver and shift as it moved, like the creepy exoskeleton of an alien from her nightmares. Before her shock had worn off, its black gaze flicked to her. It spoke, a guttural sound that was painful to hear. The sound echoed through her mind as she winced, and a moment later, transformed into one clear word, mine. The shells around its mouth made a strange clicking sound as they rearranged to reveal rows of sharp teeth. You female are mine. She snapped from her stupor, turning and running back the way she came. It caught her hair, yanking her back in one motion as she hit the floor with a crack. She coughed, spitting blood and rolling onto her back. Crawling backward, she eyed it and then glanced back over her shoulder at the med bay. If I can't get to those weapons Seer left for me in time, I'm going to be an alien incubator. <laughs>